So this next series is a pretty quick one part series creating some reproduction um, windows. Now I live in a historic town so there's a lot of older style windows that have um, window glaze on the outside of the panel. Nowadays a lot of windows are made out of plastic but when people want to replace them they usually want to match the original style of the house so you have to make older style windows and glaze them over. Now um, this video I'm not going to label it a DIY video but since this is going into a basement, um, their lower level windows, the customer did not want to spend a lot of money making um, proper windows. So I designed a way to make these that utilizes more bridle joints and lap joints, which was much easier to make than making them um, the proper way. Now I do have a video on my channel that's a couple years old. I'll tr try and remember to link it in the description that shows how to make windows um, more realistic to how they would have been made back then. I actually have a sample joint from that project. It's a much more intricate way to build them um, because the joints wherever they cross over have to intersect and there's a lot more jointing to do, mortise and tenon, cutting lap joints, cutting angles. So this is a very time consuming project. Now people that specialize in making windows have shops that are set up for that but someone like myself to one off making a set of windows. This was a very intricate project, so it ends up costing a lot of money. So basically I just designed a way to avoid having to make something like this, but still make it structurally sound in order to get these reproduction style older windows without breaking the bank. So like I said, I'm not gonna label this a DIY video, but I think this is a very um, obtainable style for people that potentially wanna replace their older windows versus this one. There's also some expensive router bits to buy in order to make something like this. So like I said, it's gonna be a pretty quick one part series. These windows at this point were actually supposed to be installed by now, but um, because where it's been so hot up here, it's been in the 90s and extremely humid, the glaze isn't really dry enough for me to paint that, to paint it and install them. But once they go up, I'll try and put some finished pictures um, as the new thumbnail versus just standing in my shop. So this is just to give you an idea of the bits needed to make um, these windows and the proper technique. So you have um, a bit that, that creates the molding and depending on the style of the window, this bit might not work for the style you're looking for. A bit to create the um, concave uh, mirror image of that on the side so it fits together as well as a bit for rabbiting on the back. This is just um, a visual of the joint needed for the laps. So it's a little more involved than the joint I'm gonna be showing you. As well as the fact that you then have to mortise and tenon all of these uh, mullions into the frame. So it's a much more involved process. Um, to start my process, I got some lumber, I cut it down into small sizes, and then I planed it to size. Um, whenever I use this Douglas fir from the Home Depot, it's a nicer grade of lumber. However, you do have to let it set for a little bit before using it because it's not at relative humidity or equilibrium, I should say, for my uh, temperate zone. So I've had this lumber for about two months and um, I could then plane it down. These windows were, I believe, an inch and I think 5 16 so I didn't have to take much off. They're already pretty thick. But once you plane down this, this um, it's a prime grade Douglas fir I can get from the Home Depot. It's, it's, it's rather nice. So to start this off, I'm doing a bridle joints in all of my corners, so I use my tenoning jig for this. And the next two or three videos, I actually have an intern this summer. Um, he's from a local community center for kids. So some of these images, I didn't want him on camera for multiple reasons, but you can kind of see that that is not myself cutting these joints. So the camera angles are not going to be what I usually have because we were working on teaching and learning, not necessarily YouTube videos, but I still tried to film for the six weeks he's in the shop and have the projects on there. But just a heads up that that is whose hands might be in, in some of these clips. But you can see I'm just making those joints. Now the top and the bottom rails for these windows are different sizes. So there was a little bit of a difference in the, in the lap joints and the bridle joints for the top and the bottom. 
Now once that's made, I can make the receiving end, and I like to do these on the radial arm saw because I can raise the blade and get a pretty accurate cut once I, once I make a test piece and make sure it fits. Um, this is not necessarily the fastest way to do it, but it's the way I prefer to do it. So I don't show putting the outside frame together till later. Um, for the inside frame, I'm just using basic lap joints. You can see I have my dado stack set up. You can't see it, but on the far side of the frame, I have a stop in place so that all these dados are being set in the exact same spot um, on all of my frame pieces. So instead of the intricate joinery that you saw in the beginning of the video, I'm just doing basic lap joints and basic bridle joints to make um, the frame for, for the windows. So see, I'm just setting this up so that I, I'm getting it right where my marks are. And there's there's two lap joints on the top and bottom of the windows and then one on the center because three glass panels will be going um, into these pieces. And the windows are pretty much identical. One was about an eighth inch bigger than the other. So once that was done, I could start roughing out the lumber for the mullions. The one problem with these older windows is the mullions are about a half inch, so they're rather thin. So modern um, products don't really work with them, which you'll see with, with the, the push points for, for attaching the glass. But I milled up a bunch of this lumber in the beginning, and now I could just go through because it's square and cut half inch pieces. Now the way I'm attaching all of this, like I said, you saw me cut the first half of the lap and then I could cut the matching part here. So this is pretty simple stuff. Um, I have the, the negative already in the frame. I could just go through and measure it. You can see, and then everything fits together. I could put one in place on top of the other and mark exactly where the middle lap has to be cut. So all these pieces interconnect. So this will be a very strong window. It's all lap jointed together, but some of the joints will be, will be seen, but this is gonna be painted, so it's pretty much covered up and I cheated the joints that will be seen to the inside and it's in a basement so you won't see them um, very, very clearly. And, um, and then I could just take those marks that I made, bring them over to the radial arm saw and, and cut those, those middles out. And then you could see the, my first cross section fits together. There's only two cross sections in the windows. So to glue these up, this is the outer frame. You could see now how those bridle joints fit together on the outside of that frame. I could take all of the pieces apart and then glue the frame together first, making sure that the whole piece is square. So I'm just attaching some tr clamps and I could check my triangles, my triangles, my, my diagonals, make sure that the diagonal measurement is the same. That's a quick way to know if your frame is square. And then I could start attaching all of the laps in place as well. So there I am checking the diagonals. If one side's a little off, you can usually just slightly tap one corner. It'll shift it just enough. Um, with all of these joints in place, I'm usually only off about a 16th or an eighth of an inch. And then I could go through and glue in all the mullions. So with the glue in place, these are pretty pretty tight joints, which is what you want. So I just had to slightly hammer everything into place. But you can see, even though I'm saying this is not the proper made way, way to make these windows, that it's still going to be a very, very strong window. So this is where the, the slight cheat comes into place. So I have um, the molding bit that I wanted for the piece in there. And now instead of doing all of this pre-putting pre the window together, I'm just going to cut all the moldings once it's together. The only thing you're gonna have to worry about is the fact that so you'll have um, rounded corners and I just had to go through and square all the corners up 
and then you'll have the molding profile you want on the top. Now I didn't really have the right bit for this molding profile because it is an older window. So all I did was take an eighth inch bit, you could see right there, and I switched out the bearing for a smaller bearing, and that's what gave me the profile that, I, that worked for the window I was copying. So it's just this little bit of the corner you have to square off with the molding, and then you have um, the profile you need on the front. This is the part that makes these a little bit easier, is routing all this after it's together. So for the back side, same thing for the rabbiting bit. I didn't have the bit I needed because these mullions are so thin. So um, I bought this very, very cheap bit off of Amazon. This is not a sponsored post. I'm not even recommending getting this bit because it worked for these windows, but it was so cheap it probably won't work very long. And this was a rabbiting bit that just came with multiple sets of bearings because I needed a very, very big bearing on the top of this bit in order to get the cut I need. This is a close up of it. As you could see it comes with a whole stack of bearings that you could switch off, and then I could cut the back side, the rabbits, which will receive the glass. The one thing that you could see how much play is in this bearing, that was the one criticism on YouTube. Um, so I stopped and started with this bearing a lot to make sure that that nut doesn't come off because I've had nuts come off of those bits before and it can quickly ruin your piece. So after that I put a coat of primer and two coats of paint on it because it's easier to paint before the glass goes in and then I could glaze these in place. This is the window glazing I'm using. It's very very warm out where I live so this was stuff was easy to use. I didn't even have to knead it and the process for this is a, a, a combination of the manufacturer's instructions as well as stuff I've learned over the years from other people that, that do this for a living. So I'm just putting a very thin bead of material in um, the rabbit of the frame so the glass can then set into place. So I go around the whole front frame. I didn't film it, but before I do this, I coat the wood with linseed oil so um, it makes the process a little easier and then I could fit the glass into place. Now the push points go into the edge frame really easily but the middles because the, the mullions are so thin I had to trim down the tips of the push points a little bit but those are usually pretty easy to push in place with with your putty knife and then that's what it looks like. There's going to be squeeze out on the back side but after a couple days I could go in and remove that um, on the back side. And then I just take a little bit of putty and I kind of pretty sloppily put it on there. Originally, like I said, it's so warm out, so this stuff is about 10 times more pliable than, than plywoods, uh, plywood, than uh, Play-Doh. So I let this set up a little bit before I started smoothing it out. So that's kind of the rough look I'm going for with attaching the putty. Uh, this is a special window glazing putty knife, but you do not need one to do this. So that's the window with all of it in there roughly. Then this stuff stays soft for quite a while. So after about an hour or two, I came back and I'm dipping this in a little bit of mineral spirits. And then I could go through and smooth over my edges and remove the excess with the putty knife. So you're just basically trying to get a nice smooth line, no ripples, not too much putty. I could go through and clean them up and that's basically how I glaze them. Now after a week or so, this sets up enough that you can paint it, but it's been so warm, this stuff hasn't skinned over yet, so I'm still waiting to do that, and that's basically where I am in this process, but you can see smoothing it out is pretty easy, and then I'm left with nice, nice sharp edges and corners and, and fresh glaze on these windows. I have two quick photos of what they look like in my shop. They're still filthy. I wait until everything's dry to clean off the glass, but that's basically the project.